Good evening. The board is now returned from closed session and we'll begin the regular session of the Keys Union School District Board of Trustees meeting. Item 4.1, report out closed session items. We have nothing to report out. Moving on to item 4.2, approval amendment of agenda. Do we have any, Dana? Any uh, amendments? No. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as is? A motion. We got a first, we got a second? I second it. Ooh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to flag salute. I guess you're up, Wes. Will everybody please rise. Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you. Everybody's phone's going off from Pittman's uh, teleparents. And then moving on to invitation uh, to address the board of trustees. Dana, do we have any? We have one. We have one. Mr. Serta, come on down. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Josue Serda, and uh, I'm a father of three that go here. And I'm also the uh, PE para here in Keys Elementary. And what I wanted to voice my concern about today was the, um, the food that's been given to the kids, just not mine in particular, but, you know, the whole school. Uh, this all came about because I was just curious to see what uh, our kids were eating and how they were, you know, what they were eating throughout the day. Uh, the more I started looking into it, the more I realized the food here wasn't really adequate enough. And by adequate, I mean uh, the, uh, sh the sugar content inside the meals and the breakfast that were being provided was very high. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if um, we know or everybody knows how sugar affects the brain, but uh, too much sugar can cause the, um, the brain to not concentrate uh, it affects the learning and retention processes as well, too. Uh, it also affects the uh, motor control. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on this, and I've actually done a paper on it as well, too, uh, recently. So it just gave me more interest to see what is going on with the kids' food. Um, the uh, it's I don't see it as, um, how do I say it? It's not, I don't see it as a bad thing. It's just the amount of sugar that's in these, these snacks and foods that we have is kind of high. Uh, I've noticed some of them up to 23 grams, 32 grams of sugar. So that's like about three tablespoons of sugar in the morning, you know, and these kids are eating that in the morning. So I don't think that's uh, good for them, especially if we want them to sit down and pay attention. Um, the other thing that I also wanted to address was the lunches. Now, the lunches, I've noticed that the pizzas, they've been throwing them away. The students have because they don't like it. And I've asked them, you know, what, why don't you guys like it? They say, oh, it's just, it's too greasy or it's overcooked. It's inside plastic. A lot of it gets thrown away. And uh, me being here in person, seeing that, I'm just like, well, it's, it's not a good thing. Uh, a lot of these kids need proper nutrition. And if we're not giving that to them, uh, they aren't having the nutrition to drive themselves through the school day. And uh, this is not like something that I, I want to put on a particular person. I just want us as a community together to get, get together and say, hey, what can we do to uh, better the, the types of food that we give to our children? Because if we want them to stay focused, uh, sugar is something that I don't think we should be giving them in the morning. And we need to give them uh, things that have more nutrients in there with their foods. Now, I know we do give them a, a milk and a pear, but most kids eat the actual food. Um, unfortunately for the pizzas, they don't, but you can imagine a kid who hasn't ate the day before, goes out through most of the day not eating. Uh, he's not going to have much energy to concentrate, won't want to concentrate in class, which disrupts the class, and the, kind of the teacher's going to have to address that. Um, but with that being said as well, too, uh, the second concern that I had was that uh, – the students do take a fair amount of Takis, Hot Cheetos, Doritos, sugar candy, all those things they take into school. And I see it on a regular basis. And I ask them, do you guys eat breakfast? Oh, well, it's because I have this. And I tell them, well, you guys better eat breakfast because it's, you know, it's healthy. You guys got to eat something healthy. But they have these family-sized bag ones. 
and they'll eat the whole thing. And I've seen to where the students go to the nurse and they throw up and it's just, it's not, you know, it's not pretty, but um, Mr. Moran's also tried to address that uh, with some of the students telling them, hey, you guys need to eat something healthy. But uh, again, we, I don't know if we have control over that or not, but I, I feel like we should, as the parents and educators, tell these students, you know what, you guys can't bring this to school because it's not good for you. It doesn't help you concentrate. It doesn't provide any nutritional value. Um, and it shouldn't be a good thing that we should allow our students to continue consuming these products that aren't any good for them. Um, that's uh, pretty much uh, pretty much what I wanted to say. And I hope that we can come to something in this community to where we can provide something of nutritional value. Uh, I do feel it's a concern of mine that feels, feels that needs to be addressed immediately. Um, if anything, I can help with whatever it is that you guys want me to to acquire anything nutritious or anything of that. I'm, I'm open for it and I would like to help as well too. Um, I just hope you guys can help Perfect. with that. Perfect, thank you for your comment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right, appreciate the comment. Without any others, we'll move on to announcements. 7.1, Spratling Middle School Open House Science Fair is May 12th. 7.2, Spratling Middle School 7th Grade Award Assembly is May 13th. Keys to Learning Charter Senior Grad Night is May 13th. Keys Elementary School Talent Show is May 19th. Keys Elementary School Open House is May 19th. 7.6, Keys to Learning Charter Spring Dance is from 8 to 12. It's not a zoo dance. <laughs> I thought it was zoo themed. Then I asked Betty Joe what it was. <laughs> Moving on to... Um, 7.7 .7, Keys to Learning Charter K6 Award Ceremonies, May 23rd. Spratling Middle School 8th Grade Banquet, Dance, and Bus Around the Community is May 23rd. Keys Elementary School Mile Madness is May 25th. Spratling Middle School 8th Grade Promotion and Graduation is May 25th. Spratling Middle School 6th Grade Awards Assemblies, May 26th. Keys to Learning Charter Junior High Promotions, May 26th. Keys Elementary School fifth grade clap out is May, the last day of school? Thank you. Uh, Keys to Learning Charter High School graduations, May 27th. May is a busy month for everybody. Moving on to 8.1 staff reports. We've read the reports. Do we have any questions or concerns? All right, thank you. Moving on to student council. Are they in the room? Yeah, there you guys are. I would have you do the flag salute. Come on up. We brought a crowd for you girls. Good evening, everyone. We are the student representatives for Spratling Middle School. I'm Jocelyn Jimenez, the president of student council. Hello, I'm Roxana Rosco, and I'm the Vice President of Student Council. The first topic we will be talking about is the May Flowers Art Contest winners. The winners of this contest were Vanessa Vasquez and Abigail Sanchez. On Friday, the fifth graders came to SMS. We showed them around the school and answered their interesting questions. They also had lunch at SMS, which they enjoyed. We are planning on having Kona Ice on Friday for students that have perfect attendance during state testing. We've all been working hard on testing these past two weeks. On Friday, we were also having two assemblies. We were having an equity assembly and our sports awards assembly. Seventh and eighth grade will have their end of the year awards on May 20th. Eighth will be at eight o'clock and seventh will be at 9.30. Sixth grade will have theirs on Thursday, May 26th at one o'clock. Open house is th this Thursday, May 12th, five to 7 p.m. 5 to 5.30, there will be free hot dog meals for, for the SMS families. The science fair will begin will be in the gym. 5.30 to 7 o'clock are the class visits. 7 o'clock, new sixth grader orientation and uh, the eighth grade parent meetings. A variety of community programs will have tables set up. Sixth grade will be leaving to outdoor education May 18th at 1.30 and will be coming back that Friday. 
This will be the first time in three years that a sixth grade class will be attending outdoor education. Today, 23 eighth graders went on a fun career day field trip. We learned more about the medical area, agriculture, and technology. While talking to our peers, we learned that they really liked the hands-on activities. Eighth grade is getting ready for our promotion activities. On May 23rd, we will have a banquet dance from 5.15 and 9.15. On May 24th, we have our all-day bowling trip. On May 25th, we will have our promotion ceremony, which starts at six. Uh, thank you for everything over the years. We're so thankful for the opportunity you have given us while we have been in this district. We will, we will now be passing out cards Student Council has made for you. Have a good rest of your evening. Just wanna say you girls have done a great job when we open back up the meetings. You've been at every one and this is our last meeting with you girls. We appreciate it. Yes, thank you. I think you've uh, represented your school extremely well. You are both very well spoken and we appreciate having you. We will certainly um, look, wish you your, our best to you as you move on uh, and you'll be missed. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, girls, thank you. Is the chart What? Charter students, are they, is there any other? No. Uh, moving on to 8.3, 2021 and 2022 reclassification of English fluent proficiency, Mr. Brazil. Okay, so every year, um, one of the most exciting things, I think for me, having been a second language learner myself, at the age of nine, I came from Portugal and didn't know a word of English. So learning English is extremely important in, the, in this, community and not just in this community, but obviously in the state and in our country. And it is amazing to see the hard work that staff and students have put together to where tonight we can honor a, a large number of students who have done so well that they have been reclassified as being English proficient. Um, doesn't mean that they have lost their, their first language. And we certainly don't want to uh, encourage that by any means. My, my encouragement would be keep learning both and you will be a better person for, or even more than two if you can. But tonight I also have Miss, Mrs. Stewart is here and she is our EL coordinator and has done an amazing job. Um, a little bit later, I, I will share something, but today she is here with Ms. Rosales, who will do some translating. And so we'd like to present certificates to um, all of the students and thank them for their hard work and show them that you've done it and you can do it and you will continue to do and, and do well. And we wish you that. So Ms. Stewart. Um, for the very last time, it is my privilege to recognize our students who have been reclassified fluent English proficient. Este va a ser la última vez que la señora Stewart va a presentar estas presentaciones porque es su último año. These students have been required to work twice as hard as their English only peers. As additional language learners, they have been learning all content material for each subject while learning English. Para estos estudiantes es un, no solamente es un milagro, pero también un gran esfuerzo que sus hijos han hecho porque están aprendiendo inglés y, y, y no solamente eso, pero la, todo lo academia, entonces matemática, ciencia, todo lo demás encima de aprender inglés. Entonces todo eso es, es como cualquier estudiante que usted tiene está trabajando doble de lo que los demás de su, su casa o en sus clases están haciendo. This takes determination and support. Y claro, eso de, de, necesitan determinación y claro, la ayuda de ustedes para seguir motivándose para continuar haciendo este trabajo. We acknowledge their teachers' instruction and support that made reclassification possible. But most of all, we acknowledge their family's support. We appreciate that you have made learning a priority and supported your child in every possible way. Sabemos que mucho de este trabajo es también de los maestros. 
eh, nos ayudan, apoyan a sus hijos. Pero al mismo tiempo, todo ese trabajo también depende de ustedes como padres. No pueden llegar a tener esto sin, sin la ayuda de ustedes, el tiempo, a la energía. A veces uh, uno se frustra porque su estudiante no está haciendo lo que uno quiere, pero todo eso vemos el gran provecho de, de ver el, el gran honor de ustedes como padres contribuyendo al aprendizaje de su hijo. Will all students being recognized line up at the back of the room? So if you just stand and line up right at the very back. So todos los estudiantes que vinieron para ser reconocidos para este certificado, si pueden hacer una línea atrás. When your name is called, you'll come forward to receive your certificate. I would like to ask that the audience hold their applause until all names have been called. Solamente la audiencia, si pueden esperar hasta que nombramos todos los estudiantes para aplaudir. Gracias. We will first recognize students who were reclassified during the 2021 school year and due to COVID restrictions weren't able to be recognized. Los primeros nombres que vamos a nombrar son personas que, o estudiantes que no podían el año pasado recibir su certificado. Okay. Y me, me permiten, quizás pueda pronunciar los, los nombres equivocadamente. So, Iker Aguirre. Diana Alvarado, José Alejandro Manuelos, Karina Gamino Zamora, Emiliano Núñez Para, Alison Ochoa, Sofía Pulido. José Ramses Ramírez. Ruby Ruiz Armandaris. César Santos. Paola Valencia Reina. I'm very proud of Paula. She's been in the country less than three years and has become fluent proficient. So, ella va a recibir un, uh, un abrazo porque ha, uh, solamente ha estado en el, en el país tres años y ahora es bilingüe. Right, estos son para este año. Vicente Carrillo Orozco. Erlene Garcha. Shivmi Garcha. Shashid González García. Jocelyn Guzmán. Javier López Lombera, Gilberto Ortega Sánchez, Giovanni Ortega, Jaden Peñalosa Chávez, Mia Picola. Isabella Ramos, Adiel Rios, Hector Rios, Giselle Rodriguez, 
Evelyn Rodriguez. George Sanchez. Uh, Christian Sereno Sanchez. And Christopher Sereno Sanchez. Let's give them all a round of applause. I just want to add that um, when you guys get into middle school and high school, now that you're reclassified, it gives you a much better schedule. And uh, that test, uh, how hard it was, was it'll be worth it when you get a little older. You'll understand. If we could, uh, Mr. President, if we could have um, families, if you would like to partake, we have some waters and cookies, probably not the best sugar. I, I know, Josue, this is not, <laughs> not looking very good, but, um, but those are available. You are welcome to partake and, and you are also welcome to stay for the remainder of the meeting if you wish. Um, so we'll, we'll take a short recess something. starting at 620, which is right now. So thank you. And get some pictures, guys. So, padres, si gusten quedarse, pueden. También hay galletas y agua para ustedes. No se tienen que quedar toda la reunión. So, si gusten salir, también los despedimos. Pero si quieren quedarse, también. <laughs> Written, oral, and verb, and uh,
Thank you. Welcome back from our quick recess. We're moving on to 8.4 presentation, 2021-22 retiree, Mr. Brazil. Well, tonight I get the privilege of uh, sharing uh, a token of the appreciation from the school district, from the board, from parents, from students, for the hard and amazing work that three individuals have uh, paid to this district and, and continue to do so. So it is with great privilege that I first would like Ms. Judy Lowe, if you would come up. And that is just a small thank you, thank token. You, thank you. We want to thank you for 17 years of service to Keys and to all the students. You, you are truly an amazing individual, and I wish you all the best as you retire. Thank you. You will be missed. Thank you. If you ever want to come back, you can. <laughs> Next individual is from Prattling Middle School, and it is Mr. Ellis. If Mr. Ellis would come up. That is a small token of appreciation. <laughs> I wanted to very much. thank you for 21 years 21 of service years. to the district, and you have served in education for far longer than that, both as a board member as well as a teacher. So I wish you all the best. And again, you too are welcome to come back anytime. <laughs> Subbing you. is available anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for your service. Thank you. And the last person, but certainly not least, is Ms. Carolyn Stewart, if she would please come up. Wow. All of you know that uh, Carolyn, especially tonight, uh, was a very special, I'm sure, and I completely understand to see her last group, but the impact you've had is something that will live for a very long time and go on. And so your 14 years of service are certainly appreciated, and I am thankful uh, for what you have done for this community. And I, I appreciate all the hard work of paperwork, testing, assessments, and having reports finished on time. So congratulations, and I wish you absolutely, you too may sub anytime you'd like. <laughs> and just while, while I'm here, I was made aware of today that uh, Ms. Rosales, Ms. Leticia Rosales was named Teacher of the Year by the Rotary Club of Turlock. So I would like to recognize and congratulate her on that. And Ms. Rosales will be taking on the duties of Ms. Stewart as the English Language uh, Development Coordinator for, um, for Keys School District. So we are so excited. I know Mrs. Brewer is very happy because she didn't want to lose a teacher from the middle school, but we are thankful that you are here to, to serve our students. So thank you. I just want to say a couple of things in this moment. Um, Ms. Lux, I love going in your classroom. I, sometimes I like catching you without kids when you're on your break and you're walking through because it was great just to socialize with you. And that's one thing. So we went to one of the School Bells Awards with her. And that's when I really got to socialize with you. And I really appreciate that night. And from then on, I think we've been really friendly. Uh, so we're going to miss you. Mr. Ellis, all I can say is back when, when we had the six-door outdoor ed, uh, you coming up here and speaking with passion, you changed a lot for a lot of kids. And uh, hopefully that passion lives on um, with the board that's here. Because you made a big difference that night. And Ms. Carolyn Stewart, not only do this graduation is all about what you've done and accomplished with your team, but you've done a lot of volunteer after hours for this district and for this campus. And it, it's important and we appreciate it. Anybody else? Well, I would definitely say if it was entirely up to me, it would be 
confetti all up above. <laughs> and I would hit the golden buzzer for each and every one of you know that. So thank you so much for your service, everyone, so much. And, and that's putting it just so mildly. It's, there's so much deeper and, and, and so much more meaning I, I want to convey, but I just um, hit the button for you, know that. Thank you. It's like saying, enjoy your retirement. Yeah. You're gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy knows he's retired. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With nothing else, we'll move on to consent agenda items. Action prepared for consent calendar are consistent with adopted and approved policies of the district and are deemed routine in nature. They'll be acted upon in one motion without discussion unless members of the board request that an item be removed from the consent calendar. In that event, it'll be taken up on the order indicated on the main agenda. Any questions or concerns? 9.1 through 9.3. All right, do we have a motion to approve? All motion. We have a first, do we have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to action items, 10.1, approval of certificated classified confidential management personnel action items. Any questions or concerns? We have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion. We have a first, do we have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to 10.2, approval of MOU between KUSD and Keys USD Board of Trustees for allocation of State of California Health and Human Service Agency grant funds. Mr. Brazil? Yes, these were funds that were allocated uh, from the state for us to administer and to uh, take on the duty of providing testing uh, for not only employees, but for students as needed. And so this is an agreement for some of those funds to go towards paying interim health, which we had to um, contract out with to have an individual qualified to do so, and then stipends for uh, the individuals listed for their uh, taking on the extra duties to do so. All right, any questions or concerns? We have a motion to approve? Aye, motion. We have a first, do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to 10.3. Approval of the 2022-23 Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators and Annual Statement of Need 30-Day Substitute, Mr. Brazil. So this is a kind of a housekeeping item at the end of each year. As we prepare for the new coming year, we want the board to recognize that there may be times where we can't find a fully credentialed individual to take on the duties. Um, and so we at times either have to um, hire and they then join either a PIP or a STIP, which is an, basically an internship or a program where they are um, or continue to, to learn and to master uh, the, the techniques in, in, in good teaching. So every year we have to basically have the board approve that if we can't find someone who is fully, that we will do our best to hire someone who does not, but who qualifies for extra support. So that's what we're asking for all of that. And it includes, uh, substitutes. As you know, however, this year, so many changes went on about the governor allowing individuals to substitute with fewer things, but this goes straight to the Commission on Teacher Credentialing, and they authorize us to, to then hire, and it's audited by the county. And we've done this for many years and actually hire teachers that come in on these circumstances, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Any questions, concerns? Uh, motion to approve? I'll motion. I have a first, I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Jimmy? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to item 10.4, approval of 2022-23 career inspiration MOU between KUSD and S and SCOE. Is that what the kids went and did today? Yes, this is a or an, an agreement uh, uh, for uh, individual students to take uh, these field trips to basically look at career exploration. So today we had a group that went um, and they looked into farming, into technology, into the different career fields. And so this is for field trips to continue to be done for um, students who want to pursue a career. And sometimes you think, well, at this point, they can't be ready. No, they're, they're ready. And they start looking at those, and particularly in junior high. So we're asking that the board approve the, uh, the MOU between the Keys District and the County Office of Ed who puts on uh, some of these programs. It really help them choose classes in high school if they have an idea where they want to go. Uh, any questions or concerns? No. Do we have a motion to approve? I have a motion. I have a first. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you. Moving on to item 10.5, approval of KTA Sunshine proposal for the 2022-23 school year. Mr. Brazil. And I'm asking that the board approve or uh, accept the Sunshine proposal from KTA for the coming school year so that we can set meetings and begin negotiating for the new school year. Any questions or concerns? Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. We have first, do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving on to item 10.6, approval of district sunshine proposal for KTA for 2022-23 school year. Mr. Brazil. So part of the process of sunshining, not only does the bargaining uh, unit uh, submit, but also the district submits. So this is our request to um, also go to the bargaining table. Yeah, Mr. Brazil, if, if, if a, one of the students had asked you, what does sunshining mean? Give me that definition. <laughs> Bringing to um, bringing to to bearing or to or, or to the front. Okay. To, light, to be uh, Stephanie, exposed or Steph, Stephanie had a good answer. You want to jump up to the microphone? No, <laughs> she said bringing it to light. Bringing it to light. <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah. Making it public. It's 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 a way that if the public wants to know, for example, what the unions were wanting to bargain, then this would be a public place where um, anyone can look at that and say, well, is it contract language? Is it benefits and uh, salaries? Is it working conditions? Is it uh, a number of, of other things? Is it leaves or, or um, other pay related uh, stipends even? So it's just, it's being, it's, it's forcing everyone to be transparent to say, here's what we're looking at. Here's where our intents are and we're ready to, to go to uh, to the table. Thank you for that. Thanks for asking that for a student. Right. Well, I just have a feeling I'm going to be asked that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, did we approve that one, Dana? No. Which one are we on? Did we approve it? No. Uh, do I have a motion to approve after Wes's I'll, I'll great question? Sure. We have a first. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to 10.7. Approval of con continuance of CSEA MOU extension. We hold this every month, Mr. Brazil. This is this is the CSEA's uh, continuing to uh, engage with an MOU uh, during the COVID uh, times and and uh, what our current agreement is in place. Everything is still good. Yes. All right. Any questions or concerns? Motion to approve. I'll make that motion. Uh, first, do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Moving on to 10.8, approval of BBK architect quotes for KES and SMS modernization products. Mr. Brazil? So we're asking, we, we've shared with the board the, the costs of what we have uh, put together as the, the needs of kind of the district. So both the projects that will take place at SMS, the projects that will take uh, place at KES with facilities and, and other things like the, the a track or, or the field being turned into a much use, more useful um, place than it is at this point. Uh, but also, for example, the large project at KES will be all of the windows and uh, along the, the facade there that are kind of, some of them are almost like there's a false wall in, in between them and obviously air circulation is terrible. So what we are doing is asking the board to approve uh, the work we have begun with architects who are developing that project. Um, the other thing I have to, to, obviously this is all using ESSER one-time funds that are allowed only for these things. The problem is that we have to expend them by 2024, 25, depending on what it is. Um, and we're hoping that we'll get extensions because the process to get any project approved is very difficult. And some of it has to go to DSA. They're telling us, you know, we're, we're not looking at anything that's <laughs> not two or three months out or any of those things. But um, so today, all we are asking the board to do is to approve the architect um, to work on these modernization projects and we then at some point are hoping to go out to bid for all of these projects as soon as we have uh, the go ahead. All right. Any questions or concerns? We have a motion to approve. I'll motion. We have first, we have second. I'll, I'll second. second. Uh, he beat you, Jimmy. All right. It's your track. You should have been on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Way to beat him, Mike. We'll show yeah. him. 
All right, moving on to discussion items, Esther 3. Esther 3, we have submitted our, our plans and continue to implement uh, the plans. For example, our summer school will be uh, using uh, not only, the, the, it'll kind of be divided into two components where there will be a, mo a morning session and then an extended session. The Most of these plans were put together with how we were going to show that we were going to address the needs of, of students um, and fill in the gap of instruction that they missed while on distance learning. So what we're, uh, Part of the, the issue, and it's not just ESSER funds, but all of these plans come together is to say, really, they want students to, for, they want us to provide instruction for nine hours a day. Um, we have to offer it. It doesn't mean that everyone has to partake in it. But if you can imagine, this will be, a, that's why we're trying it in summer school. We're doing the first four and a half hours of a regular traditional summer school. And then ACES has agreed to uh, provide enrichment activities because that's the other thing. It can't just be play. It has to be enrichment and tied to, to academics for the remainder of the day. My only concern, and I think I've shared this with, with many people, is, you know, it, it's tough to be an adult somewhere for nine hours, much less a student. I mean, that, that's just a tough thing to do. So, um, Again, all we're being told is you have to provide. So we're going to do our best to provide with limited staffing because there are positions that at times we can't fill. So we're thankful that ACES has been able to partner with us and with PAL to, to be able to provide those services. Um, and again, that's not just the ESSER, but it's the ELO plan. It's the every alphabet soup plan you can think of, including the LCAP. So, uh, and there are multiple, anytime we change anything, we have to update it and it has to go uh, be reposted on the website and reapproved. But we are, we're living through it as Stephanie knows well and Raul about the finance part of it. Maybe um, some of our retirees could donate a little time. Huh? <laughs> I think they walk out. their dues. Just walk out now. <laughs> That's what you get for staying for watching the meeting. <laughs> it only gets worse from here. <laughs> Mr. Ellis is off the hook because he walked out. <laughs> I'll make that motion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Any questions or anything on SR3? All right. 11.2 SMS track meeting update. So the, the update is we have everything turned into um, the architects now that we have it approved and we will be trying to proceed as quickly as we can with then going out to bid and, and proceeding with the project. J Jimmy? I'm all excited about it. <laughs> no, Jimmy asks nice. every week, if sometimes twice a week, he comes in to find out how, where that track is. It's still if there, Jimmy. Walk across it. It looks good from the road. <laughs> if you walk across it, it's pasture-like. <laughs> up and down and up and down. Kids can't really play out there safe. Uh, it'll be great when it's finished. All right, we're just going to put your name next to that one, everyone. <laughs> Amen. All right, moving on to reports. 12.1 uh, superintendent report. Okay, well, we continue to seek candidates for art teacher for the coming school year. We thought we had a candidate and then the candidate chose to go elsewhere. Um, we're still looking for a seventh grade teacher and we'll be interviewing for both the seventh grade teacher um, so that we can have a teacher on special assignment to cover a vacancy. Uh, and also we have to, uh, or we have to hire to cover the vacancy that Ms. Rosales will, will leave from, from her classroom. Um, as she takes on the EL coordinator role for next year. So those are kind of the, the big hires that we are working on. The LCAP plan continues to be worked on. It must be approved um, or be ready for public by June 16th, and then finally approved on June 23rd. Um, we continue to work on all the building and facilities projects. We've met with the architect, obviously, legal counsel, because all of these things have to be approved. And at this point, we will continue to prioritize and look at what the bids come in as to how feasible it is to do some of these projects or do we have enough or, or what we're going to do. Um, we're definitely on, on a countdown mode as we approach the end of the school year. Um, this is, as all of, all of you know, is probably the busiest time of year and hectic. And uh, I, I wanna also thank the, the fact that I think everybody is, um, really looking forward to a break, but I also am very thankful that we have staff who are willing to work through summer school because that will be an entire month, and that certainly uh, leaves them basically July, and, and I think batteries need to be recharged, and, and understandably so. 
Um, Mr. Murray is working on summer school and notices. Uh, they'll be going out tomorrow or, or later on in the week. And then on the we're going to first try and sink those individuals who by assessment have shown that they are one or two years behind so that they are given priority to attend. Um, however, as I said before, some of the funds uh, indicate that we have to offer it to everybody. So we're first going to do kind of an invitation and then on the 20th send out, okay, we have open, is anyone interested so that we can, and if we have to, we'll put waiting lists on. Um, I'm excited about uh, reviewing student work uh, portfolios with KTL for both the high school and middle school. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm also uh, looking forward to attending both open houses and, and talent show that we have coming up. And I will be scheduling negotiation sessions with KTA since the sun shining proposals are now um, approved. And we have been able to conduct interviews to fill most of our open positions. Um, and I think a lot of that really was helpful to participate in the county's um, recruitment fair. I think that was very, very uh, good to be there. Um, I wanted to congratulate all of the EL students for meeting the, this huge milestone of being reclassified and all of the work that they do, but also obviously what staff does uh, to make that happen because it, it really is uh, a mission. Um, and I, as I said before, I, I want us to celebrate the dual language and, and appreciate that. But it, it is uh, amazing to see how quickly, for example, the young lady with three years in the country and has become fluent English proficient. That was, that's no small thing. And I, I think that that needs to be celebrated as it was. Um, I also wish to congratulate the three retirees that we're honoring uh, here tonight. Um, Certainly my most sincere gratitude and congratulations um, on, on your ability to retire and, and to say, I don't have to get up tomorrow. I think that I, I am envious of that, but thank you for all of your work and you really will be missed. Um, so thank you for touching the lives of kids and families in, the, in this community. Um, I wanna also congratulate all of our KTL Junior High and Spratling Middle School graduates. Um, and I also congratulate the KTL seniors as they graduate in the coming uh, weeks. I wish everyone a great summer and some time off, and I hope that people really do and recharge, um, and it's needed. And um, I, I'm hoping that we continue with the freedoms of not dealing with the craziness of COVID and that things continue well. Um, our next board meeting is on June 16th and then on the 23rd, uh, where we'll update the LCAP and the budget will be approved as well. And that is all I have at this. I, again, I wanted to congratulate Ms. Rosales on, on Teacher of the Year since that happened today. Linda is not in here, but she is also being honored later on um, this week and um, at the county for her support of the ACES program and really being supportive of, of making it happen there and to look out for kids, bringing supplies, supporting the program and encouraging kids. So we certainly wanna thank, thank her for that. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Moving on to board member comments, Mr. Emmons. Well, as far as the retirees, I, I do know how you feel right now. <laughs> you will like it. You're gonna miss us a little bit, but. You'll get over it pretty quick, I think. <laughs> There's a lot of fun things to do out there. Now you have the time to do it. So congratulations for all your hard work and you deserve this. The other day we had an opportunity to go to the junior senior KTL banquet. It was a lot of fun. I got to meet uh, Colonel Mustard. I had never met him before. <laughs> Found out it was Jeff later, but <laughs> uh, was, they put on a good show. Uh, the juniors always take care. They serve the seniors every year and make it really feel special. Um, it was nice to attend. All right, moving on to Mr. Green. Well, I think the main thing tonight um, for me is thanking the, the retiring teachers. I said it a little earlier. I don't even think us saying thank you is enough, but I, I can maybe leave you with this. And, and I, I know you already know this, but I'll, I'll just reiterate. 
the thanks that I, I believe I would like to extend to you is maybe just seeing the students that you've affected, that you have mentored, seeing the successes in them later in their life will be the thanks. And I think that that's what I want to articulate tonight is, um, is looking at my life and seeing the teachers that influenced me and the decisions I've made in my life. I've pulled from the teachers. I pulled from the, the mentoring that they gave me from the fifth grade, sixth grade. And you know, I'm 56 now and I still pull from them teachers. So the thanks that I want to give you is to know that it'll always be remembered by every and each one that you've influenced. So thank you tonight. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's what I have to say. All right, thank you. Mr. Burnell? Yeah, I'd like to congratulate all the retirees and I know you're gonna enjoy your time off and uh, enjoy your family. And, you know, I take my hat off to you for impacting the lives that you've touched. Uh, like Wesley has said, uh, there was, I can remember I'm 55 and I remember uh, coaches that impacted my life to this day. So, and also all the teachers that dedicated their life into education, impacting young people's lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Greener. I would like to say thank you to all the teachers and staff for their hard work this year. I know it's been tough the last couple of years, but you guys went and got through it and so did we and uh, have a great summer. One last thing, Jeff. Oh, geez, Wes. I know. Well, I, the teacher of the year, I don't know if I know her. Of course you do. Well, she's from town. Right. I, a mask I don't know. Who it is. It's because your mask is on. I think that's what it is, right? <laughs> Thank you so much and congratulations. Her, her mom used to be a Spratling and then she's my age. We grew up together. Yes. See, you knew her. Why yeah, you look I so much her. older than her? What? I said, why you look so much older than her? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I was just wondering about this age difference. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a whole list. Um, was able to go to the KTL Elementary Talent Show. That was great to watch. I, all three of us went to that one. Um, it was great to see Terry pop up. I didn't know her grandkids went to that school. It was even better that her youngest granddaughter was a Dodgers fan, and I got her riled up against Jimmy. So we were causing havoc in the back row. Dodger, giant, Dodger, giant. It was kept going back and forth. Um, got to go to the softball game. That was a great time to play with the eighth graders. Um, I did hit home run, but the second time I hit, I fell. And I look really ridiculous, but I got, I got a point at least. And then I was able to catch a ride to the field trip with the student body because Miss Brazil puts it in the Friday letter. And so I, I got in contact with the right, right teacher and went to that one. We went to the Turlock Animal Shelter, and that was a pretty fun field trip. We got to see the dogs and hear about their careers and stuff. Um, charter dinner was a great uh, night. Um, unfortunately, I was the only one dressed up, but that made me feel even more special, so I was okay with it. Um, but it, like Jimmy said, it's really great to see the, the juniors cater to the seniors as like, thank you for being my friend, being our classmate and sending them off uh, and their families off to a good year with a good slideshow and some stories about it. It was uh, the clue theme, which they had a fun game for us all to play. Um, it was a little easy. We all got it. We all won. But uh, we usually don't win games when we get invited. Um, End of the year events, there are so many events. Please try to make it as many as we can. It's, it's so chaotic, we can't make it all, but it's um, great to go. The two open houses coming up. And my final thing is, I said a little bit earlier, but Roxanne and Jocelyn come to all our meetings. They've already left, but they're sports girls, they're student body girls, they're volunteer girls. They put a lot into um, coming to the meetings and their, and their education. Uh, I'm going to miss them. I love watching them play sports, but they were – always the eager ones to come and help and be friendly. So I appreciate all that moving oh, and the retirees, but I already said a little speech about that. Moving on to item 13.1. The next board meeting will be June 16th at 5:30. regular session at six. And there's also another one, the following one because of the budget 23rd. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? A motion. We have a first, we have a second. A second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you guys all for coming. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>